Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at motor pathways, also known as descending pathways, where the brain takes conscious information about wanting to move a muscle and sends it down to those muscles to tell them to move. So predominantly we're focusing on one pathway called the corticospinal pathway, but we're also taking a look at upper and lower motor neurons and what happens when they are damaged. But first let's orientate ourselves to what we've drawn up here. So we've got our two cerebral hemispheres for our brain. We've got the cortex of the cerebrum as well. And remember the cortex is the outer few millimeters of the brain that deals with consciousness. So either if sensory information gets to the cortex, you become consciously aware, or if you want to consciously move a muscle, it must originate at the cortex. So here we're talking about consciously wanting to move a muscle. And so this is going to originate at an area of the cortex called the motor cortex. And the motor cortex is located in the frontal lobe. And similar to the somatosensory cortex, the area where we experience or are consciously aware of sensation, there is a map of our body on this particular cortex. So we've got an area map for the hand and this is where conscious movement of the hand will originate. And that's what we've got here. In addition to this, deeper in the brain, we've got our thalamus here and here. So again, they're the sorting centers, but they're most important for sensory information. Then we've got our brainstem. And remember the parts of the brainstem include the midbrain, include the pons, and include the medulla. So these are the three components of the brain stem. And then we've got our spinal cord. Now I'm going to tell you about the two neuron chain of uh, motor information. Now remember, it's going to be called the corticospinal pathway. And it is about conscious motor movement. Conscious motor movement. All right, so unlike sensory where it began at the structure of the body and moved its way up, hence ascending, this descending pathway starts at the motor cortex. And let's just say we want to tell our hand to move. Now, if we want to tell our hand to move, this signal will originate here at the motor cortex and it's going to send a neuron down, down, down the brain stem at the medulla this same neuron crosses to the other side. That's called decussation. Decussation crosses to the other side and then continues down. This is still the one neuron. And then it's going to synapse with a second neuron at around about the level that it wants to exit. And then this neuron will obviously go to the muscles and tell that muscle to contract. So here it's a two neuron chain, unlike sensory information, which was a three neuron chain ascending up. Now let's do the same thing, but let's do it for the leg, right? So we've got, we'll draw up where the leg sits. So we've got the leg part of the body, part of the, sorry, the motor cortex mapped to the leg. The signal's going to begin at this part of the motor cortex. It sends that neuron down. It decussates at the medulla and it continues down, 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 down. And then it will sign up with the second neuron at the level in which it exits. And so what you can see is we have an upper motor neuron and then a lower motor neuron. So let's talk about something called a reflex, right? Now, if I were to stretch the muscle of my quadriceps, the muscle would want to reflexively contract. And it does this to protect itself because it goes, I don't want to overstretch and damage myself and tear, so I want to reflexively contract. And this is a reflex, and so you can actually elicit this reflex by getting a little hammer, and you can hit what's called the patella tendon, the tendon that sits just underneath the patella, and if you hit it, it stretches the quadricep. Now, if you stretch the quadriceps, what that is going to do is it's going to trigger sensory neurons, right? So sensory neurons get triggered here. They send a signal into the spinal cord, which synapse with the lower motor neuron. 
and it tells it to contract, shortening. So the stimulus was a stretch, it triggered the sensory neuron to go into the spinal cord, which synapsed with the lower motor neuron, which then came back and told it to contract. It bypasses the brain, the signal doesn't go to the brain, not until after the fact. This is a local circuit. Now the reason why I'm telling you this is because the lower motor neuron really, really wants to tell that muscle to contract. In actual fact, it really wants to tell these muscles to contract all the time. This lower motor neuron to the hand wants to tell the hand to contract all the time, and this one here going to the quadriceps wants to tell it to contract all the time. And this is one of the roles of the upper motor neuron, is to modulate this constant contraction that the lower motor neuron wants to do. So it actually not just says, hey, I want you to contract a specific muscle, it tells it, hey, I want you to contract it, but not right now, yes now, not right now, yes now, okay? So it modulates that. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because this is important when it comes to people who have spinal cord injuries. So for example, let's think about this. What if somebody experienced an injury of the lower motor neuron. So the lower motor neuron here is damaged. What do you think is gonna happen? Let's write this down, right? Lower motor neuron. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, I told you that this lower motor neuron is really important for telling that muscle to contract, all right? It's also important because this neuron when it's alive and well and healthy, it will release growth factors, which are important chemicals that tell muscles to grow. So two important things that happen if a lower motor neuron is damaged is that the mass or size of that motor neuron diminishes significantly. Because again, this lower motor neuron can't release those growth factors. The power of this muscle, if the lower motor neuron is damaged, drops significantly as well, because this is the neuron that's primarily responsible for saying contract, 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 all right? What about the reflex? If I were to hit it with a patella tendon, right? The sensory neuron's intact. It goes into the spinal cord to synapse with the lower motor neuron, but nothing happens because the lower motor neuron's damaged. So the reflex is reduced. This is called hyporeflexia, hyporeflexia. Now, this also means that the muscle has hypotonia. So reduced ability to contract. And we also call this flaccidity. The muscle is flaccid, flaccidity. And this is what happens when you have a lower motor neuron injury. But think about what happens if we have, so let's just say this is intact, right? There's no problem with this lower motor neuron. It's okay, it's intact, here it is, but it's the upper motor neuron that has an issue. So now the damage is here at the upper motor neuron. What happens? Well, let's write this down. Let's compare it to the lower motor neuron. So let's write it next door, upper motor neuron. And let's look at the same thing. So let's look at mass, first of all. So. This lower motor neuron is intact, so it can still release growth factors. Now, if the upper motor neuron isn't working, the lower motor neuron's not really gonna do much either in regards to it's not gonna be functioning appropriately. So while the mass will be reduced, it won't be as significant as the lower motor neuron because again, the lower motor neuron, neuron is intact. It's still releasing growth factors, just not as much as it usually would. Power. Well again, this lower motor neuron is what's responsible for telling that muscle to contract. And that lower motor neuron is intact. So the power is still present, but it is reduced, but not as much as it is with the lower motor neuron. What about the reflex? Hit the patella tendon with a hammer, stretch, stimulate the sensory neuron, goes into the spinal cord, talks to that lower motor neuron, which is intact, and it can send the signal back to tell it to contract. But the thing is this, what did I tell you the upper motor neuron does? It's really important at modulating and dampening the lower motor neuron. But if the upper motor neuron is damaged, the lower motor neuron just keeps contracting. So you actually don't get hyporeflexia, you get hyperreflexia, hyperreflexia. 
And because there's that lack of inhibition from the upper motor neuron, this muscle can find itself contracting when it shouldn't. So you don't get hypotonia, you get hypertonia, or at least you can, I shouldn't say it's always the case, you can get hypertonia. And this isn't called flaccidity, it's called spasticity. Spasticity. And so that's an upper, an issue with an upper motor neuron. So again, this is when you have lesions or damage to these particular areas. And now you can think about it, let's get rid of that, right? Now the reason why I've drawn both of these up is for a particular purpose, because if you have a look here now, what if somebody experienced some sort of lesion or damage to the spinal cord here? Actually, let's not there, let's say here. There we go. We've got damage right there, which means you've got damage to the lower motor neuron of the hand, but you've got damage to the upper motor neuron of the leg. So what do you think is gonna happen? Well, if the hand lower motor neuron is damaged, these are gonna be the signs that's gonna present for that part of the body. But the leg, because it's an upper motor neuron issue, these are gonna be the signs that present. And so hopefully, this is a nice simple run through of the conscious motor pathways that descend from the brain and the important roles of the upper and lower motor neurons. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.